gearing systems in Aldershaw. We're having a chat with Graham. Now, you're experts in gearing aerospace, is that it? Yes, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. aerospace gearing, yes. Yeah. So, nice and simple. Now, we're in your citizen city, you call it, I think. Citizen city, that's exactly what it is, yeah. Okay. How many machines you got? We've got 10 citizens in here, yeah. Okay. Now, why are you such fans of citizen? Well, we got into Citizen quite a few years ago where we bought a company and there was Citizen machines in there. And we got to understand them and uh, then we started to use them on our work. The natural progression was then is to invest in them in ourselves and bring that technology into FT gearing. Yeah. And I just want to clarify as well, you bought that company 20 years ago? 20 years ago, yeah. yeah. And that Citizen still going strong? That Citizen is still next door. Okay, so just a great endorsement of the quality of the machines. Yeah. So. A bit more back, back, background about the company though, please. Okay, well, as I said, FT Gearings is basically a gearing, gearing company for aerospace. Started in about 1978 with a few lathes and just grew from there. And we love, I love gearing. So okay. gearing's in my blood. And to make gears, you have to have accurate lathes to do that. Yeah. And specifically with shafts, and that's where the citizens come in, um, the only way to make long, accurate gear shafts is to use a sliding head. Okay, now you've got 10 citizens, is that right? Ten. Yes, 10. Okay, ranging from what sizes? Uh, we start from a B12, which is this little baby, and we go up to the M32, which will go up to 35 millimeter. Okay, and we're here today to talk about your latest acquisition, which is the L20 yeah. LFV. The LFV, yes. I think she's been in here now for about a month. And uh, yeah, absolutely uh, over the moon with her. It's a major step forward in, in sliding head technology, without a doubt. Okay. Just in terms of brief specification, I put you on the spot in terms of uh, tools, turrets, things like that. Right, okay, it has more tools than the other ones, but one of the most important things about this particular one, it has a Y axis on the second spindle. So you can gang up live and fixed tools here, so you've right. got more tools working on the back end, which is very important on parts such as the one I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, so you're working both spindles at the same time driven tooling and get on, on a gang. That's it, yeah, Absolutely. on both front and back, yeah. Okay. Also, I noticed around here, Mitsubishi controls, why is that? We have Mitsubishi and we have fun, at mainly Mitsubishi. The guys prefer the Mitsubishi, but when we had, had to buy a machine and the Fanuc was the only one on it, and I think that's mainly on the simpler machines, actually, then we use Fanuc as well. Okay. Now, I, you know, you could buy the machines and they're really, really fantastic machines, but Paul North, your salesman, but also the guys at a bush I'm assuming you're working from. Sales is Paul, what's that like? Uh, working with Paul is fantastic. Paul's a great guy. I actually like Paul a lot. Uh, very honest. I uh, will tell you if, the, if you if the machine's good for you or not, and we'll go into it. However, I can go back to the days of Darren Wilkins, who used to come in here and install my machines and service them and fix them if there was a breakdown. And I think he's now the MD up there now. He's one of the top guys out there, aren't you, Darren? Absolutely. Yeah. And when we ever go to the show, I walk into the citizen stand. I think I'm quite easy. They've worked me out over the years. I'll order a machine. I always want it very, very quickly, although they probably think that I don't order in advance. And, and I'll take the machine as soon as I can get them. Yeah, and it's always a quick delivery. Okay, so they basically they look after you, Graham. They look after me very well. Okay. And interesting though, Darren was on the shop floor at one point. Yes, as I said, seen him many, many a times in there, and he's always got a big smile. Uh, they're very, very easy to talk to. And Darren has this way when you sit down and you say, Darren, I'm after this machine. And he'll say, no, come on, Graham, let's have a look at the drawings. Let's see what machine is the best for you. So you get good advice. Okay, so coming up with a solution. Right, now, the reason, you, I mean, we talked briefly about the specification yep. machine, but key to it, LFE, low frequency vibration. What's it doing for you? Right, we've been after a machine that can do this for many, many years, simply because of the way that we use hard aerospace materials that do need swarf. Uh, take the swarf off. We've tried the cool blasters, which can work and does work, apart from the Marage steel, which flattens it out into razor blades. Uh, so we, we, cool blaster is not on every tool. So we needed a solution to stop the swarf. Um, because we pick up and we transfer and all of our components have to be zero marks on them and practically zero concentricity, we have to have complete and utter swarf removal. Uh, we went for the LFV, I saw it at the show, up in um, Watford, and, but they were not using our materials. I sent some material to them, some of our S143. They used it and they said that it worked perfectly. So I took a chance and we, it wasn't much of a chance because they're not going to make a machine that doesn't work. And this is, this is, the, this is it, it's, and it's here. And it's worked 
better than I, I expected. Really? Okay, that's fantastic. Now, we will come to component in, in here in a little while, but what I want to just clarify is you've got 10 machines here. If you go LFE, would you go all, all of them? There's actually no turning back. Right. I'm serious. Okay. There's no turning back. So once you've gone LFE, you won't go back? You can't. No, it's just, okay. it's just another step forward. Brilliant. Okay. Now, what I want to do, as is usual, I want to put you to test and see some of these components that you previously manufactured and how you manufacture them now on the LFE machine. Okay. Okay. So we have here uh, in my hand a spider which was used, uh, was used to be done on the L20 and the A20. It's a very fiddly little job that I think we, I talked to the operator, I think he confirmed it's about a five stop swarf job. Because of the, it has five microns on each diameter, it has a five microns through the bore, but the turnover and true position of that bore to the both journals, again, is within five microns. So that is a nasty little job. Okay, so, Machine the component, you're stopping it essentially five times five for times. Each, each component. Okay. Just to make sure no swarf ingress at all. Exactly. To ensure, well, basically to ensure five micron accuracy, just to clarify that as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So with these parts in, you know, you're thinking sliding head machine shop, you're knocking out five, ten thousand components at a time. That's not the case with you guys. No, uh, a, a large batch for us is about 500. Okay. And a small batch is crazy, but it could be 20 but the 20 could be very long, very long and very complex parts. Okay, when you say long, how long? Uh, we go up to 39 inches here. We've got an M32 over the back there with a special long, long parts catcher, and it's 39 inches. Impressive stuff. So, just going back to this then, yep. before, what was the sort of cycle time for this component, so and what is it now? Okay, the cycle time for this component uh, with swarf breaks and checking was about four per hour. And I've, now on this machine here, we're getting about eight an hour. Yeah, right, okay. but it's not just that. It's the, it's the point where we can actually walk away from the machine and come back and find eight after an hour. Right, okay, so just to clarify, the machines were machining it relatively fast previously. This is faster, but the fact that you haven't got that, that problem with the bird's nest or anything like that, that's a main constituent of yeah. why you're saving time. Yeah, that is exactly it. And it's a really strange thing. If you have a look into the machine now, there's not any swarf. Right. And if you looked at the other machines here, it, we call it the enemy. Swarf is the enemy, and it's a constant battle. This seems to have taken that away. Okay, now that's a great example of the component there. So not big batch runs, but real, real accuracy needed yeah. all time. Yeah, exactly right. Now, I want to look at another component as well, please. Right, we have a worm shaft here. Now, this worm shaft, actually, is part of the reverse thrust system on every Airbus that flies today. Um, it comes directly from this machine and it has to go on a five-star worm grinding machine. Right. Now, the beauty of this little part is it's perfect, perfect citizen part because of the length as opposed to the diameter. Right. So it would be, you can make it on a chucking machine, but it would be a lot, a lot more difficult. On a sliding head, it's perfect. This machine picks it up and takes it over there and we are looking at concentricity of all diameters to five to eight microns. Sorry, five microns just to confirm? Yeah, five microns. Okay, so again, just to reiterate, this machine shop is not about big batch runs, which you think of a sliding head, but this is really real accurate components. Exactly that, yeah, exactly. And the size, the size is, as well as the concentricity, both these diameters have to repeat all day long to within five microns. Okay, and that has to be right, because it's, it's yeah. Your life is dependent on it if you're going on all day. It has to be accurate, yeah. But also with the loading of the very expensive fixtures on gear grinding machines, that has to go in and it has to be perfect. Because once it's clamped, if there's any distortion in that at all, right. it will move it, it will cut the gear, and as it unclamps, it goes back to the, the this distorted shape that it was. So it has to be absolutely perfect. So no problems with the citizen machines? No problem at all. Okay, I just want a quick summary of why you bought these machines, the Citizens. Right, I bought Citizens because they are bulletproof, I would say. Absolutely bulletproof. The spare situation and service situation is easy. Um, I actually don't do with them anymore that I used to on a daily basis. Uh, Jason over there and the other Jason and Greg know the engine engineers by name. I came in here the other day and uh, Phil Francis was in here. Um, playing around with programs and adjusting. So they're like a, I would say, definitely a partner. Part of the team. Part of the team, yeah. Excellent. Great, great endorsement. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much indeed.